Labeled the man with the smile in his voice, Jack Wardsmith was an American radio actor and host, as well as a baritone crooner. Smith was born on November 16, 1913, at Fort Ward on Bainbridge Island near Seattle, Washington, and given the fort's name as his middle name. The son of Annapolis graduate who had transferred into the Army, Major Walter Smith, Jack Smith's family moved to Hawaii when he was five years old and enjoyed the tropics for four years they were stationed there. After retiring from the Army, the Major moved his family to Los Angeles. As a teenager, Smith attended Hollywood High School and sang in the Glee Club. Smith and two friends, Al Teeter and Marty Sparzell, regularly visited the Coconut Grove in the Ambassador Hotel to listen to the Rhythm Boys, Harry Barris, Al Rinker, and Bing Crosby. When the boys ended their engagement at the Grove, Smith, Teeter, and Sparzell decided to create their own trio in addition for the spot. We were young enough to have the nerve and... Somehow, we got the job, Smith commented years later. They thus became the Ambassador Trio, or the Three Ambassadors, named after the hotel, earning $75 or $100 per week, depending upon the source. For several months, they performed with the Gus Arnheim Orchestra and then Jimmy Greer's band before taking a job in San Francisco at the Mark Hopkins Hotel. Phil Harris eventually asked them to come back to the Coconut Grove in 1933, and the Ambassadors did and subsequently went on tour with the Harris Orchestra for two years. While Smith had continued in school during the day for a time, performing became too much, and he left Hollywood High School needing only one semester to graduate. Eventually, Smith and the Ambassadors headed to New York at the suggestion of Phil Harris. There, the trio earned a spot on The Kate Smith Show and began making regular appearances on her radio program in the early to mid-1930s. Looking back, Smith was proud that the ambassadors were able to make it professionally on their own without the association of any bigger-named orchestra. After four years with Kate Smith, the trio jumped at an opening on Eddie Cantor's program. Success built upon success, and throughout the 1930s, Jack Smith's radio workload increased to where he was working 11 radio programs at once. Among the shows on which Smith worked during that decade were Fred Allen's Town Hall Tonight, multiple Philip Morris programs, and the Prudential Family Hour. Around 1939, Smith became a soloist on the Prudential program, and moved on from the Ambassadors, forging a separate career from then on. After this time, the Smiling Jack moniker was attached to him by Deems Taylor, a nickname Smith was happy to have, if only to delineate him from the earlier radio start, Whispering Jack Smith. Within two years, due to the stress of so much radio work, Smith began to cut back on his broadcasting altogether. With war clouds gathering, Smith enrolled in a class about aircraft maintenance, a class he ended up teaching after six months. Smith taught the maintenance course for five years, from 1941 to the beginning of 1946, while continuing to appear on the family hour on his day off from teaching. In 1945, Procter & Gamble began their sponsorship of Smith on the epitomous Jack Smith Show, which it premiered on August 19, 1945. The relationship would last for seven years. Although the program title would change during that time, the overall format of Smith's program stayed fairly consistent. Primarily a music program, the show included pleasant patter in between the numbers, the amount of which varied over the years. The first two seasons of the Jack Smith Show, which aired daily for 15 minutes, regularly featured guests, but they were dropped beginning with the 1948-49 season. Replacing the guests were Martha Tilton and Clark Sisters, each singing act appearing on two episodes a week, while Smith handled the fifth show on his own. 
At this time, Smith and the show left New York and returned to his adopted home, California. In between 1949 and 1951, Procter and Gamble changed the show's title to The Oxidol Show, highlighting their laundry detergent brand. During these seasons, the female singers were Dinah Shore, who appeared three times a week, and Margaret Whiting, who appeared the other two. For the 1951-52 season, Margaret Whiting was dropped after requesting some time off in favor of Ginny Sims. Procter & Gamble also switched out the featured product and renamed the program to The Tide Show. As television continued to make inroads with radio listeners, Procter & Gamble cut back on radio budgets, including Jack Smith's show, which saw its $13,000 weekly budget cut by about 35%. Recognizing that his future would be in television and not radio, Smith got his first break in the medium as an MC of Place the Face in 1953. This was followed by The Wayward Traveler in 1955, Love Story from 1955 to 56, and You Asked for It, in 1958 and in later revivals. Smith was also cast in bit parts in a variety of television shows through the 1960s and 70s, including Wagon Train and Leave it to Beaver. Jack Smith's entertainment career also includes small roles in a handful of motion pictures, most notably 1933's King Kong. And he had a number of musical singles through the 1940s and 50s on Capitol Records, Columbia Records, and others. In 1960, Smith's radio work was recognized with a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Smith would die at his home in Westlake Village, California, on July 3, 2006. He was 92 years old. This biography was written by Ryan Ellett with information from Cox Music Radio, The LA Times, Radio Television Mirror, TV Radio Mirror, and Variety. For old-time radio researchers, I'm your announcer, Patrick Andre. Thank you for listening.